I am Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read, Kickstarters I've backed, and where you can find those comics and Kickstarters for yourselves. So, let's dive in with the first here. It is from Immortal Studios, and I'm going to show you all the extras I got with it, starting with this pin. Check that out. I'm a collector of pins, so I love this. Uh, that's going to be going into my collection. Awesome stuff. That is the um, Immortal Studios logo. And here we have the Immortal Studios logo as a sticker. Now, uh, a lot of stickers come through Kickstarter, and um, this is the lid to one of my comic book boxes. And so I will, I like to stick the stickers on my lids so that I know what comics are in what. Uh, I need to find some Marvel ones to stick to my Marvel lids. But you get the idea. My indie comics uh, have a lot more stickers because Kickstarter people like to get stickers in their stuff. So that's cool. Um, and I'm a big fan of stickers. That's Immortal. This one also came with a postcard of... Sasha True is a fictional singer from this band called Immortal. And uh, this is a postcard of Sasha True with her signature on it. That's pretty cool looking. Really good art love it and uh, this Kickstarter even came with a uh, concert ticket stub that's really cool L really cool extra really cool uh, bookmark too and uh, it's been a long time since I've been to a concert so that's kind of cool to get that so let's start off with the comic that all this stuff came with the adept the adept is a uh, it's got a spot finish on the cover. That's really cool. I don't know if that comes across on the video. But uh, all this is regular print. And then the girl in the front here has the spot finish on her. It makes it really pop out glossy-wise. When you're holding it, it's just like, bam. It looks really cool. I love it. And i uh, got to figure out how to do that myself. All right, so here's the Adept with story by Peter Sh Shio. Shio? I don't I'm bad at pronunciations, I'm um, sorry. If you would like to give me a phone call and tell me how to pronounce your names, that would be awesome. So, P Peter Shiro, she at, shoot, I'm getting worse the harder I try. Story co and concept by Peter Shiao. Variant cover by Z Zhu, Z-I-X-U. And I don't think that's, I don't know which cover this is. Written by Tasha Howe. Variant cover two by Sam Beck. Writer Charlie Stickney, who is a favorite of mine. He writes uh, The White Ash. So, this has two writers, Tasha Howe and Charlie Stickney. Action choreographer. Jean Ching. Wow, that's pretty cool that this book has a choreographer. And artist Yishan Li. And action layouts by Connor Hughes, also an artist from uh, White Ash. And letterer Daron Bennett. And edited by Emma Chibulu. So, this is Adept. Um, let me see here. Really cool stuff. I really enjoyed this storyline. Um, the artwork, like I could see why they needed a uh, martial arts choreographer because you could actually picture this stuff happening, every move, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, a lot of there's some kung fu in this, karate action, all that stuff. Um, so this is the adept is the story of two sisters. And these two sisters go to a concert together, this Sasha True singer. And uh, in the middle of all that, at the concert, um, so there seems to be a plot. That is a really cool shot, too. Double page spread, splash page there. Um, and there they all, they're all wearing the uh, Immortal logo. That's cool. So. During the middle of this concert, uh, a bunch of people show up to kidnap Sasha True, and uh, this monk shows up, this uh, martial arts looking guy, 
and uh, he shows up to protect her. And then this, the main sister, Amy, uh, she's been having dreams that uh, have this uh, martial arts guy in them. And he's in her dreams, he trains her how to be a martial artist. But she thought they were just dreams, but apparently she actually picked up all the stuff that he trained her. And uh, he ends up protect protecting uh, this singer, Sasha True. I don't know why people are trying to kidnap her or anything, but uh, sh she needs the protection of these two. It's really cool. I, I really enjoyed how this was done. The artwork is amazing, and uh, that's pretty cool. Um, so we find out... Oh, man, I lost my train of thought. thought. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but, yeah, she, uh, she helps Sasha True. They escape through an air duct and make a couple jokes like Die Hard, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. And uh, she ends up keeping Sasha safe through the whole thing. But at the very end, after all this is over, uh, Amy's sister feels abandoned because she woke up and uh, her sister was not there. And she, she just felt betrayed that she was abandoned and uh, won't talk to her now. So, yeah, it... It's, it's the start of an awesome story, and this is actually the start of an awesome universe, which is going to pick up in, coming soon in, uh, I think it's Chronicles of Immortal. It's a Kickstarter running right now until March 31st, so yeah, check that one out. Um, it'd be real, I can't wait to see where this goes from there, and uh, looks really entertaining. The artwork in this one is amazing. The storytelling is awesome astounding and uh, awesome. So that's my review of The Adept. And uh, the Kickstarter that is coming, that is currently running right now for uh, the uh, Swords of the Immortal, I think. Yeah. Uh, Immortal Studios. Anyway. Um, Adept. Number one. Um, Shoot. Wow. I'm all flubbered up. Anyway, okay, moving on to White Ash. Five and six. These are from Scout Comics. Uh, I had these sent... I had these in my hold at uh, Gamers Asylum Comic Shop in Ogden, Utah. And so I've already read these through the Kickstarter. It was nice to reread these from the comic shop. And... Uh, Let's see. Let's start in on the credits. So, White Ash is written by Charlie Stickney, illustrated and lettered by Connor Hughes, and colored by Finn, La Finn Cram, with Scout Production, David Byrne. Oh, David Byrne, um, who does the uh, Stake comic book, vampire comic book that I've been reading. So that's pretty cool. Um, neat to know. So, yeah. Oh my gosh, White Ash is one of my favorite comics. Um, it's right up there in my top ten. And uh, the art is always amazing. This story just is, it cracks me up. It's always a good time to read, and uh, crazy stuff happens. It even has fake ads in it. That's, that's always funny. Um, the kind of ads like, do you like to draw cats? We'll take these lessons on how to draw other cats and stuff like that. Pretty cool stuff. But yeah, there there is some really cool stuff. Alec is the main character here, and uh, Lillian, who is an elf, and Alec is a dwarf, and Lillian is a elf, an elf, and uh, she helps him. She's helping him find a missing friend of Alec's, and. Uh, they, they, oh man, oh, I'm getting really bad here. So they find these, there's this really cool scene here involving these uh, Ogham sticks. And they are, they are sticks that were uh, created from uh, Nilda Valir, as you may know from the Thor movies, that that is the place where uh, the Vikings get their weapons, the Asgardians get their weapons from and uh, so they like these sticks and whatever you're trying to seek out 
the smoke will lead a trail to that thing. And so they use it to uh, they use it to track down a friend of theirs, Caitlin, who is being held by a vampire. So this story is awesome. It's got dwarves, it's got Asgardians, elves and vampires, all sorts of cool stuff going on in this. So I highly, 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 highly recommend you read White Hash. Oh, that's an awesome splash page right there. Spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, I I freaking love this storyline, White Ash, and uh, I can't wait to read more as it continues on. Um, in fact, it is continuing on right now on Kickstarter through the storyline of uh, Lillian's mom, Glarian, is in her own title right now. Uh, a comic book that is on Kickstarter right now. Glarian number one. Check it out. It's on Kickstarter. It is not for kids though. It is not safe for work art. So be warned. And uh, if you're into that, I really, really, really recommend you check it out because uh, I'm already a backer on that. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to expand this White Ash universe and uh, continue reading about the folks in White Ash and yeah. So check out uh, Glarian on Kickstarter right now until March 25th. Next up on my list is... Oh shoot, I dropped the sticker. Where'd he go? And eh, disappeared for a second there. Um, here's a postcard. There, You you might know who these two are. Uh, that just came with the Kickstarter I'm talking about next. But yeah. Cap and Winter Soldier hanging out. It's pretty cool stuff. <clears throat> and here's a stick here's a bunch of stickers as you know these are going to be going on my box there is a Jupiter jet right there Jupiter jet logo Jupiter jet and the forgotten radio that's what I'm going to be reviewing next and that looks like a badge or a patch but that's pretty cool a lot of cool stuff oh there's the little brother I will talk about that in the uh, review a lot of cool stickers, really cool print, postcard and all that. And there's a good print, Ju Jupiter Jet right there, really cool. So let's move on to uh, Jupiter Jet here. There's Jupiter Jet right there, and uh, Jupiter Jet, oh yeah, I even got it signed by uh, Jason Inman and Ashley V. Robinson. Signed right there. That's pretty cool. I love it. Good stuff. Uh, so, while I'm on that, let me get into the credits here. This is written by Jason Inman and Ashley Victoria Robinson. Penciled by, and inked by Ben Matsua. And colored by Elizabeth Kramer. Colored flats by Rob... Oh my gosh, I can't read that. Rob Tisselanider and Yes Flat. Yes Flat. R O B T L S N Y D E R. Rob T. Uh, okay. Lettered and logoed by Taylor Esposito of Ghost Glyph Studios. Wow, his name comes up in a lot of stuff I read. And edited by Brittany Matter. Cover by John Boy Myers and colored by Ryan Kincaid. Kincaid. Book designed by Carlos M. Mangu Manguel. So, whew, that was rough. I'm really bad at uh, pronunciations, apparently. But one thing I love about this is uh, really good artwork in this. And one thing I wanted to bring up, speaking of artwork, this is one thing that a lot of comics struggle with and uh, I really thought I should bring it up here. I had it marked because uh, a lot of times in comics people do not draw children very well in my opinion. Uh, you don't see them as children. They're basically just small humans that are in the story supposed to be children but don't look like children. But this artist's children actually look like children. I love it. It keeps me in the story. And oh man, not to mention there are a lot of homages to uh, 
Superman in this. This feels this. Uh, it's a really fun story. Very strong uh, Superman vibes, as I showed you from that picture. Oh, I just saw the table looks just like that sticker I just showed you. Anyway, really cool stuff. There's some more of the brother, Jupiter Jet's little brother, and uh, all of, all sorts of fun stuff. This kind of goes into uh, as they go to different planets or moons. Uh, the time, the uh, what am I thinking? The advancement of the civilization goes through phases. So on this moon, they live in the old west basically, and on Jupiter Jet's moon, which she lives on the moon of uh, Europa, Jupiter's moon, and uh, her moon is kind of like the timeline is in the 1950s or 30s. A lot of cool stuff. Um, all right, back on track here. Uh, so, yeah, I love it. All the, all the Superman vibes, and uh, it. This story reminded me of uh, when I was reading comic books. It, when I started reading comic books, it was the 1980s, um, and this had a very b good feeling vibe to uh, when I started reading comics. Um, it's been a long time since. Uh, well, I've been reading a comic books reading comic books for a long time and uh, this made me feel like when I was a kid again um, like the stories were funner and more lighthearted more more so in the adventure feel and because uh, comics today I don't know they just feel like they're trying to be more than they are or something I, I don't know how to put it into words but the art style really landed to this uh, nostalgic feeling that I got, like this 80s vibe to comic books. And uh, I really love, I noticed this too, is uh, this is a volume two. I do not have volume one, but I, I think I added it to an order in a future uh, Kickstarter I backed. And so that'll be nice to uh, finally get volume one to see. You don't really need Volume 1 to know what's going on in the story. That's cool about it, too. But, uh, yeah, it was a very fun read. Very nostalgic, very very upbeat, very friendly. Um, I could I could lend this to my kids and not feel bad about it. Um, and it is a Ringo, Alo Ringo, Ringo Award nominee, and uh, that's pretty cool, too. I don't know if I'll ever get one of those, but... It, it, I enjoy reading books that have those. Oh yeah, and uh, my full name is in the Kickstarter thank you page. Gary Brantner of Rent and Arb Studios Comics. So that was cool to find that. And uh, I do enjoy it when I get to see the full name on there. So, Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio. Very good read. Um, I am currently waiting for a My Super Best Friend, number one from the same team and uh, yeah uh, this was a nice nice read and uh, very glad that I'm gonna continue I'm gonna continue supporting this group because they make some good content love their stuff they also do two of the people from this team do a podcast called geek history lesson I've got a pin from them and I listen to their podcast every week or so when it comes out Love that stuff. Check out Geek History Lesson podcast on uh, your... I listen to it on the Stitchers. It's on the uh, iTunes, wherever else you can read them, hear them, listen to them. And, uh, yeah, check out Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio. You can order the book yourself. You could have your comic shop pick it up for you. All sorts of fun stuff like that. So do check out Geek History Lesson. And um, well, let me check my time because i got to go pick up my kids soon. I'm good. And uh, now I'm going to move on to another book. Um, this book, it, uh, I've been, I, I'd actually been waiting for a little while on this one. Um, I originally backed it and uh, it did not make it through funding. I think it got, either got canceled or failed. Um, so that was sad. And actually, uh, I distinctly remember exactly what day I uh, back this because um, 
Well, in 2018, uh, I was at my local Comic-Con, and uh, the day after um, my Comic-Con, uh, I went to visit my dad, and he was in the hospital, and he he was not doing really well. He he has he had leukemia, and uh, I remember going through my emails and checking Kickstarters and stuff to uh, just to, just to pass the time while I was there. And I I clearly remember backing this comic book. Like uh, man, this is getting to me a little bit. Um, I. I actually I backed this the comic book the day my dad died so uh, I've had some weird feelings about this one um, but uh, anyway <clears throat> so yeah I backed this on September 11th 2018 uh, the same day my dad died and uh, anyway that's not the whole point of this review anyway but uh, I do distinctly remember that, and I know it's it's 2021 now. It took a little while for them to make it, but it was well worth the wait. They they really put a lot of heart and soul into this comic book. It is called Impossible Jones, right here. Impossible Jones. It's hardback. It's awesome. It's got the spot finish that I was talking about. Really cool stuff. I don't know if that translates really well to the camera, but yeah. So, yeah, I, I had some weird thoughts about this because uh, because I did did back it so long ago, and uh, it seemed like I waited for a long time. But they they really put a lot of effort into this book, and uh, I'm really glad I backed it. This is the print that it comes with. That's a sticker. So as you know, oh, I've already got one of their stickers on this box. That's pretty cool, huh? So, yeah, I, I stick the stickers on my box. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place right now. Um, ADD and, uh, yeah, other thoughts kind of messed up my thinking. Um, anyway, so the, impar the art is impossibly awesome, and as it is, impo is Impossible Jones here. I love that logo. That's really cool stuff. Um, the font is amazing. On that and uh, yeah this character is awesome impossible Jones is uh, it is written by a creator that wrote for DC on Harley Quinn it is drawn by a creator that drew Batman 66 and among other things Fantastic Four and stuff like that so you this is seriously an awesome book it's got tons of pages I can't remember how many many pages oh it's got numbered pages 152 pages of awesomeness in here so let's begin here the art as I said is impossibly good check that out love that first page draws you in the second you open it and uh, it's really playfully it sucks you it, the story is really playful high adventure high concept and it sucks you in get your interest right away and uh, during the reading of this I kept thinking of back when I started reading Invincible and uh, when I first discovered Invincible I remember that feeling of oh my gosh this is this is something new but is something kind of nostalgic and old at the same time and it's it's just got this Invincible vibe to it like uh, I don't know like they're just doing like they're doing a new thing and uh, it just it feels amazing to read it it's got all that fun in it like uh, every issue you just or every page turn you don't know what's gonna happen and you, you just keep wanting to keep reading and uh, all, all sorts of fun stuff like that um, yeah so I am a huge fan of Impossible Jones now, and I uh, love it. Here's an awesome pinup art that was done by uh, Kaylin Smith, another creator that I love the artwork of. Um, she does For Goodness Sakes, which is on Kickstarter right now. So I thought that was really cool. I really love that one. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of 
different variant covers in here. Really cool stuff. The behind the scenes extras in this book are awesome. Oh man, there's a really good one too. That is from Elsa Cartier. So, let's see, what was I... Where was I thinking here? Yeah, I love the behind the scenes stuff in it. Really awesome stuff. Really awesome bonus added into it. Um, this goes through the whole creation. And it even it even mentions the uh, Kickstarter that failed and they started up again. So I've backed this twice. That was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I backed it and it failed and backed it again. And I'm really glad it succeeded this time because they really put out an awesome book. And I really like how... Uh, oh yeah, there's a backup story here. The Christmas special. That was really good. I really like how they uh, did the thank you page. Let's see here. Where's the thank you page? They did the thank you page. They separated it by letters. Um, so that's really cool. It made it really easy to find the G's. Gary Brantner of Rent Herb Studios Comics. My full name is in that one too. So that was cool. And they did this really cool thing where they uh, had different Kickstarter tiers where you could uh, have your face drawn into the pic comic book as a character. And then they did it in, in the extra credits or behind the scenes. Um, they pointed out who was who and stuff. Really awesome stuff. I like that. Really cool stuff. Um, that was a good way to do that. And then here's the uh, creative team. They all got their own page. That's pretty cool stuff. Or they all got a page highlighting them. So, Impossible Jones actually has a Kickstarter running right now. And she's going to be hanging out with Holly Days who was the uh, the main antagonist in the uh, in the Christmas special. There she is right there. She's got a really uh, hardcore Holly Quinn kind of vibe. Every one of her uh, things is cr holiday based, so that's pretty cool. So um, yeah, Impossible Jones. Check out the Kickstarter for Impossible Jones 2 on Kickstarter till April 8th. And that was a really fun read. Like I said, um, if you're a fan of Invincible, you should definitely check out this book because it has that same feeling of like just wonderment and uh, you don't know what's going to happen, mayhem in it. So check out Impossible Jones, number two on Kickstarter right now till April 8th. So while I'm talking about Kickstarters, I might as well jump right into what's on Kickstarter right now. So. Moving on to Kickstarter news, hashtag Kickstarter comics, all that fun stuff. Kickstarter comic. First up is Yumi, Spy Fatale, Batty Royale, original graphic novel. It is on Kickstarter till March 11th. It is a 136 page graphic novel. Yumi meets uh, Richard, who is the love of her life, love at first sight kind of thing, and Richard disappears. And so she uh, she has to go looking for him, but she's not just your run-of-a-mill girlfriend. She's a hacker and a trained combatant, so that's pretty cool stuff. And it's not safe for work. I think it uh, it might have strong language, maybe even adult scenes, stuff like that. So I'm excited. It, it sounded like a good story. March 11th. You better check that out. It's ending soon. March 11th is the last day for Yumi, Spy Fatale. Batty Royale original graphic novel. It's spelled U, or no oh man, it's spelled Y U M I Yumi on Kickstarter right now. Nightwave Origin is on Kickstarter till March 12th, and this will be the first Planet uh, Gawkman comic to set off a long line of world-building stories, and it is written in English and French. So if you are into that you could get one uh, you could get both copies if you wanted to check that out it is already almost a goal already funded so I recommend checking that out it's 23 pages but there will be more stories to come they have a whole plan set out check out Nightwave Origins on Kickstarter till March 12th next up is Vampire Bloodlines 2 
Vampire Bloodlines 1, it, I reviewed a couple, like, few episodes ago. It's a while back. I'm sure you can find it. Um, but I really liked it. They did an awesome job. They did it small, too, like about this size. It was about half the size of a comic book. But it really fit for the story. It it was it was an awesome way to do it, and I love the artwork in it. And it has uh, cosplay covers. Ivy Cosplay is doing the cover of issue two, which I'm backing right now. So that'll be cool. Really cool stuff I've been seeing on Twitters on that. So check out Vampire Bloodlines number two on Kickstarter till March 14th. Young Rebels number one is on Kickstarter right now. It is a Y. It is a young adult superhero team. A tech prodigy, kind of like Tony Stark, Marco Martinez creates a team of teen heroes to prevent an apocalypse that they are supposedly the ones that created. It is 32 pages. It is a there is a cool preview on the Kickstarter. Uh, I read it and I'm like, man, this is awesome. And I also got to vote on uh, the way the title looks, so that's pretty cool too. Uh, it would. I, I remember saying on Twitter that it would make a really cool sticker if you just stacked the the uh, young rebels on top of each other instead of stretched out over the full thing. So check out Young Rebels number one on Kickstarter right now until March 16th. I am hexed. Ooh, that's another one I reviewed and read a while ago, and I can't wait to read the the next installment. I am hexed number four is on Kickstarter right now until March 18th. Uh, it is a story of witches in DC, and there is a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going behind the scenes politically, and uh, there are laws against being witches or the way witchcraft is controlled and stuff. Really cool stuff. Um, their tagline is "Equality is Magic," a comic book about the ongoing political struggles of modern day witches. In this final issue, witches have been part of the political fabric since the nation began. And witches came out in the 60s but are still controlled. So check it out. Um, the main character, Charlie, is a girl and she's trying to solve the case of a missing senator and uh, she enlists her best friend, her ex-girlfriend and a best friend who is a scientist who accidentally makes a plant into a carnivorous man-eating plant. And so, a lot of craziness going on. Check out I Am Hexed number four on Kickstarter till March 18th. And as I'm saying, it's, Mar it's uh, number four. You could get one, two, three, and four through the Kickstarter. Get them all together. I highly recommend reading that one. Really good art, really good story. Tessellation number one is on Kickstarter right now till March 19th. It is a 30-page first issue of a unique infinite reality comic. It is like sliding doors meets the game in a multiverse. Really cool stuff. Got an awesome cover on it and the artwork looks amazing. And yeah, check out Tessellation number one on Kickstarter until March 19th. A Causal number one is on Kickstarter till March 19th also. It is a fast-paced crime comic with a hint of sci-fi written by John Ward, illustrated by Ev Cantata, and lettered by Lucas Gattoni. The story of Tara Becker, a disillusioned RCMP officer who must learn to trust a pair of determined criminals, criminals that are receiving messages from the future. But only by working to, together can this unlikely trio stop a maniacal anar anarchist terrorist from destroying Toronto. Well, that's pretty cool, too, that it uh, is taking place outside of the New York realm of comic books. Anyway, the preview pages I read were awesome. The story looks cool. And uh, a causal number one is on Kickstarter till March 19th. Check that one out. Ooh. Hollowed number two, or no, this is Hollowed number three. I already read one and two. Hollowed number three is on Kickstarter right now until March 19th. Um, Hollowed number one and two was about 
uh, two detectives, one from New York and one from Chicago, and they have to team up to find this... Uh, they end up working together trying to find a serial, ki serial killer who is hollowing out his victims. And as I read in issue two, you find out that uh, it's more than just a serial killer. It is a corporation controlling, telling this guy who to kill and whatnot. So that's crazy stuff. Uh, I can't wait to see where issue three go goes from here. The artwork is bombastically graffiti looking. I love how it... it it had it made me think of um, the artist on Spider Gwen. Just the artist, the art is very uh, electrified. It just kind of all over the place, jumps out at you. Made me think of graffiti. Really cool stuff. And this uh, comic has Hollowed here has a soundtrack that goes with it. So check out Hollowed and its soundtrack on Kickstarter right now till March 19th. You can get all three issues and the soundtrack. Marcy Sparks, Omnibus, 1 and 2. Wow, Omnibuses are huge. I just read a uh, a big Omnibus of uh, Hack Slash, and this is actually from similar art kind of style, st similar stories. Marcy Sparks, Omnibus, 1 and 2, hardcover, with NFT upgrade. It means non-fungal, fungible? tokens. I have no idea what any of that means, so uh, I won't get into that. But every issue of the Heaven's Secret Bounty Hunter, uh, Mer Mercy Sparks, is on Kickstarter right now. She's hunting angels and hides among us. Wow. Sorry. I'm really struggling with this. She hunts rogue angels, hides among us, and uh, does Heaven's Dirty Work. It's almost a thousand pages in two hardcover books, and it is on Kickstarter till March 20th. Um, I've been checking out, following along with this one, and uh, the artwork looks amazing. The storyline sounds amazing, kind of like supernatural and uh, oh man, like Lucifer combined. If you combine supernatural and Lucifer, you would have Mercy Sparks Omnibus One and Two. Check that one out. If you, as soon as you see the artwork, it's amazing. Um, yeah, check out Mercy Sparks Omnibus for one and two on Kickstarter till March twentieth. Bet Noir one through three is on Kickstarter right now. It is a mysterious vigilante that enacts a plan of brutal revenge against those who wronged him. A dark, twisted tale of vengeance and pain. A world without its heroes. Only villains remain, but a ghost of the past has returned to exact bloody revenge. That bet, bet Noir, number one through three, is on Kickstarter until March 21st. Check that one out. Here is Glarian of White Ash. It is on Kickstarter right now. Um, as you know, Glarian is the mother of the elf Lillian, and we get to see how she is, uh, what she was like. Um, she actually died in the White Ash storyline, and so this will be really cool to see how that is. I think it takes place in the 70s. I'm not sure. Uh, based on the uh, clothing and artwork, it looks like it's in the 70s. So check out Glarian of White Ash, number one. It's awesome. I can't wait to get mine. It is on Kickstarter till March 24th or 5th. Why do I have two different dates written on here? Anyway, back it before March 24th. Um, Glarian of White Ash number one on Kickstarter right now. Check it out. It's got a lot of cool stuff. You could even get the White Ashes as uh, add-ons to your tiers. I highly recommend doing it that way if you have not read White Ash. Miskatonic High number 10 is on Kickstarter right now till March 25th. Wow, there's a lot of my favorites resurfacing. So. Miskatonic High number 10 is on Kickstarter. It's it's getting to be uh, really cool. Um, I don't know what I was going to say there. Um, the storyline is really ramping up to something crazy, and I can't wait to see what goes on. I mean, we've got rat people involved. We've got crazy, huge, gigantic Cthulhu-like squid monsters going 
coming out of the harbor and uh, man yeah I can't wait to see what happens next Miskatonic High issue 10 in Kickstarter right now till March 25th I think uh, next up in my read pile is a Miskatonic High so that's really cool probably issue 9 the issue right before this one so I better read that before I get too far into this universe Miskatonic High as you know is one of my favorite stories and it is on Kickstarter till March 25th. Check it out. Back it. You won't be sad. There is even a, a, a volume one you can get with it and then a bunch of issues. Or you can just get all the single issues. Whatever way you want to do it. It's really cool. And they have really cool stickers too, as you know. Uh, there's a Miskatonic High sticker right there on my lid. Cool stuff. So, back Miskatonic High number 10 right now. Nil number one is on Kickstarter. It is a about a kid who is a survivor of a decimated tribe and uh, he's battling his anger and grief as he integrates into modern society and he also has a pet dinosaur that walks around with him so it's got an awesome art style. Oh, alarm. The art style looks amazing. I mean Wow, crazy good art, and uh, looks like it, it sounds like a crazy good story too. So check out Nil Number One. This it's about the survival of a decimated tribe. On Kickstarter till March 26th. Heaven's Bestiary enamel pins is on Kickstarter right now. These are 12 pins, a series of enamel pins depicting the Chinese zodiac. As you know, I'm a collector of pins. I love pins, and these all look awesome. They are all done in a style of um, white, black, and gold, and no other colors other than that. And they each depict a different animal from the Chinese zodiac. So check them out. There's a tier where you can get one random pin at nine dollars. You don't get to pick the pin. They just send. They just choose whichever one they want to send you, or for ten dollars you could choose the pin you want and then it just keeps going up from there until you get all twelve pins the price will go up uh, based on if you get two or three or four or five whatever so check out heaven's bestiary enamel pins on kickstarter right now until march twenty sixth they look really awesome and you will be happy with them of the same coin is on Kickstarter right now. A detective investigator and a PI named Tommy Wright are an investigative okay wow detective investigator Tommy Wright and private investigator Dominic Gauch both believe that they are walking epitomes of justice but they are on opposite sides of how they do the law. It is a 32 page comic book it is gritty. It's a crime thriller based in London. It looks awesome and uh, check out Of the Same Coin on Kickstarter till March 31st. Sorry, hiccup. Chronicles of the Immortal Swordsman. This is the spin-off from uh, Adept that I reviewed at the beginning of the show. A young man's heroic awakening into, into an ancient order of supernatural warriors is facing a new civil war. Immortal's story verse continues. Adept continues from here as Phil Dew yearns for something more uh, so inspiring and indescribable that it overwhelms him. But his life is filled with struggle as while he bides his time with parkour and a game a virtual fantasy game where he calls himself Iron Pond he is beginning to have visions of strange things. So check out Chronicles of the Immortal Swordsman, number one on Kickstarter right now, the continuation of the Adept Immortal Universe on Kickstarter right now till March 31st. Ooh. Now here's one, it's not on Kickstarter, this is an Indiegogo project called The Speed of Light. It is a black and white sci-fi anthology series by Evolution publishing and it will have nine eight-page stories by different creators. Some of those stories will continue and some of them won't but 
uh, yeah, as they continue to make these speed of lights, apparently you're going to, some of the stories will continue. That sounds pretty cool to me. 72 pages total of awesome stories. I looked at some of the preview pages. They look really cool. Check it out. Speed of Light is on Kickstarter till April Fool's Day. Starside Comic. Here's another one that I've been following for a while. Starside Comic is a sci-fi fantasy book about a teen, a teen who is taken and thrown into an intergalactic adventure. There is a war going on and uh, his sister is missing. He's trying to find her throughout all this uh, space while he's trying to um, find his sister. Anyway, he discovers humanity's greater, greater purpose. The artwork on this is crazy good and uh, I can't wait to get issue four. Starside issue four is on Kickstarter right now. You can get all four issues. There's a pin, a Starside pin, which I've worn a couple times in my face masks to work. Check it out. Starside issue four on Kickstarter till April Fool's Day. Sex and Violence number three is a 64 page adult graphic novel. It has excessive nudity and violence in it. And, oh shoot, I gotta get going soon. Uh, it, it looks great. I'm getting the one with the Frank Frazetta cover on it. Um, it's from Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Rancelot, uh, Amanda Connor, sorry. Uh, Palmiotti and uh, Amanda Connor, um, they're both creators that wor have worked on uh, Harley Quinn and the uh, Pop Kill storylines that I'm reading. A lot of cool stuff. A um, lot of cool covers. There is a Joseph Linzer cover uh, in there and uh, a Sarah Frazetta cover. Obviously, uh, that's the the uh, daughter of the Frank Frazetta that um, I'm getting on my cover, so that's cool. Check out Sex and Violence number three on Kickstarter till April 4th. Um, yeah, I really need to figure out how to get one and two because they sounded good. I don't know how I missed them. Impossible Jones number two. Oh yeah, Impossible Jones number two on Kickstarter right now. Holly Day's team up. It is a girls night out. Hilarity, hijinks, and hidden secrets. 32 pages by writer Carl Kessel from Harley Quinn and David Hahn from Batman 66. Get ready to meet Krampus. Oh man. So Krampus is like the Joker to Holly Days' Harley Quinn. So that's interesting. He is a bad guy and he believes that everybody is bad. Nobody should get presents. He's, he's the Krampus. So check that one out. Impossible Jones 2 is on Kickstarter till April 8th. Planer Jane number two is a modern day story of murder and of a darkly comic... Okay, start over again. A modern day story of murder. Darkly comic story... Number two is a darkly comic story of Jane Pearson, a seemingly ordinary teen girl who becomes a brutally efficient killer, assassin. And the whole series is 150 pages broken into single issues for Kickstarter. I don't know how many pages each issue issue is, but that's awesome. I'm backing it to get one and two. I'm kind of new to this series. And the whole thing is um, done in white, black, white, and red. So that's pretty cool. I can't wait to check out Planer Jane number two. It comes out. It's on Kickstarter till April 8th. For goodness sakes. It, volume 3 is on it. It's the last volume of the series. You can get 1, 2, and 3 through this Kickstarter. And uh, for, good, for goodness sakes, Volume 3 is on Kickstarter right now. It's about a guy named Thatcher who turns more demon, demonic, demonic every time he uh, acts like a turd or an asshole. Ooh, sorry, I usually don't swear on this. Um, which is quite often. And so a free-spirited girl named Rain is trying to help him through this. By She figures that the nicer he is, he will get cured and stop being a demon. But there is more to this curse than, there, than they originally thought. And so it gets deeper and darker. Check out For Goodness Sake Volume 3 on Kickstarter till April 9th. 
Now, the Green Inferno, the world celebrates your demise. Uh, this is a 200 page anthology about what the world would be like without people. So check it out. Lurking out of focus is a... Uh, I lost my train of thought. I've got to go get my kid, so I'm going to end right here. Sorry about that. Uh, I didn't even get to my mailbox part, but maybe I'll post two different videos. Um, so that's the end of my Kickstarter section. I hope you enjoyed this. Check out all the Kickstarters that uh, I've mentioned, and even the books that I've read. Check them out. You will not be sorry that you check these books out. So, on that note, um, if you have any Kickstarters going, or if you have a comic book you want me to check out, send me a link and I will check out your Kickstarter, your Indiegogo, your uh, Dropbox comic book, whatever you want to do, um, and I'll give you a shout out. I'll even tell people how you communicated to me. I, complete transparency here, um, because... Yeah, I, none of these books I'm getting for free. These are all books I have backed, I, I believe in, and uh, I believe in enough to back them and read them and tell you about them because that these are awesome books and you should check these out. So anyway, I'm rambling on when I've got to go. So thank you for watching. Gary Brantner of Rend Arbor Studios. And uh, check next episode to... Uh, see what I read next and what I got in the mail. Thank you for watching.